Hey everyone, this is Day Trader Rockstar, and this is the high probability watch list for the week of May 12th. First of all, I want to just wish a happy Mother's Day to all the uh, mothers out there. And um, yeah, have a beautiful day. We start off just looking at this S&P uh, 500. Today was Friday, again. Um, and I actually was broadcasting today, and I, ha I had the pleasure of talking to uh, Elliot, Elliot in the chat room, Darnell. And we discussed the markets and stuff, and and it was it was a good conversation because it it's always good to talk to uh, some of the other traders out there, and I, you know, and to get their opinions, and you know, just to kind of throw things back and forth. And it, we talked about the, the the markets and his you know his concern of maybe a pullback. And um, it's hard, you know, and at that point we kind of discussed, you know, how hard it is to make a call um, overall in the markets. There's a lot of people out there that are willing to make a big call, and I understand it. You know, I try to take a technical view of the market and look at technicals and, um, you know, look at the higher probability areas to kind of judge where we have the odds of making more money. And that's as far as I want to go with that. You know, I don't want to say, well, tomorrow we're going to break out the new highs. I would love to see, you know, the market set up like that. And sometimes it does set up like that. And you actually get a, a, a really good high probability chance that a move will happen. And you can make that call. But there's, what I'm trying to say, there's really no timing uh, guarantees on this. Lots of times we watch, um, you know, the overall patterns that play out in the market. We understand that the trends are intact. We understand overbought and oversold momentum indicators. We understand uh, the compression of the price, the the, you know, the tightening of the range, the Bollinger Bands. We we understand a lot of things that kind of help us along, uh, trying to determine when moves are going to happen. But when it comes down to it, you know, it's just like uh, it's it's not it's not an exact science. So, but what we are seeing, and I've you know I've been excited about this all the week because I've been you know really testing it live, giving everyone a good view of the uh, tradeometer and the indicator pack, and really seeing how that works on that shorter time frame and then we can actually see the market in its true beauty you know here it's it looks very choppy you know here it's uh let me just bring this back out a little here we go i want to zoom it in um over the last three months you know it's just going over just looking at the chop that's going on down day reversal uh down day uh, inside pattern, inside day, or you know, push higher, push lower. Basically, you're getting tremendous chops since March, April. You did a little pullback, which was, you know, it it came in and it's it's these what it looks like on a daily. Is what I'm trying to say is it looks like sloppy. It looks very unorganized. You don't know which way is going. But as you get you get this down on the uh, tighter time frames, you take a look at that 60 minute time frame. All of a sudden, you're starting to see better patterns play out. Look at these patterns. Look at these one, two, three patterns. You know, you could start to de determine the range of a move. And uh, again, you could probably close these up. These are just uh, adjusted for the daily. So you have to just actually put those right back there. Um, these go right to these pivot areas. So just want you to, to show you that these patterns play out on a, t a tighter time frame. The 60 minute time frame is golden. It's golden right now. And I, you know, I tend to go to this as a, a directional indicator, a short-term directional indicator. It's just like anything else; you use what works. All right, you try not to, um, you know, invent something new. If something works, you use it. You know, you don't question it. You, well, you could question it, but you want to. Like I said, you don't want to. You know, if it's working, it's working. Um, until it doesn't work, basically, and it's, it comes down to the simplicity of things, right? Um, so we pay attention to is just the overbought momentum, the oversold momentum. And we r recognize that, and we also recognize that one of the rules is to use this indicator along with other uh, patterns that are playing out in the markets. And when these things combine, you have the what I call the HPS zones. And those are mapped out to you for each day. So we do that each day, but I've been seeing that 60-minute time frame is really the key time frame. And now the one-minute time frame using the, you know, the interday trades have really, you know, just lit up the screen. I mean, I am, you know, I just really want to talk about this before I go into the watch list because it was so perfect today. Even though the indicator pack started a little late, I went back, actually back tested. We would have got one at 9.50, which, of course, is that 9.50 reversal. We did have one here right after 11 o'clock, and it was right on that trend line. And, and again, you know, that trend line I put in there uh, before the fact um, I think it was just based off of this little pullback right here. This little pullback through that trend line. I extended it out and I said, all right, 
I wanted to come down. I wanted something to happen. We put that alert in there. It worked out fine. It actually gave us a sell alert here. It pulled back a little, but definitely the market here ran up. And right before I went to lunch, or I had to go actually take care of uh, some business, it gave us a sell signal. And what was nice about that is that we have the pivot area, which is a you know a, a, an indicator in itself. It's a support resistance line based on the previous uh, day's you know uh, levels, and it's all calculated out and it's plotted here. And it becomes an important um, area to watch. And the combination of that trend line there, so we knew that the, you know the multiple indicators, the multiple time frames, and everything else leading to a sell zone. But then again, you see that chop here. That chop could, you know, mess some people up. It, you know, especially if you're on a higher leverage trading vehicle like the futures. You know, a, a couple. You know, even that this gave the alert. Say we, you know, give it benefit of the doubt. It gave it around 73. Over. You know, I'm going to bring it down to low part of that. You know, it only moved up to about 74.50. But some people, you know, have a tight stop. If it hit 75, it was a two-point level there, which kind of grabbed your stop. And next thing you know, you have such a good move back. And that's the problem. You know, that's the problem with, uh, tra you know, just being a trader today. Not everyone, but a lot of the new traders will get shaken out, uh, will be very, you know, nervous in their trade. And, um, you know, a kind of a hesitation and stuff when you're dealing with your money you know, might spook you out and say, you know, this is not working. It should turn turn right around, you know. should turn right around. It got the alerts. Everything's there. Why isn't it turning around? This thing's going higher. I mean, it goes a little higher, you know, 50, but then it comes back. And we see that. This is not, you know, a, a, um, an exact an exact level science. And like I said, I'll give an example of hand, hand grenades and horseshoes. You know, want to be close to that level and understand there is going to be choppiness around there. They're going to be reaching for some stocks and some orders. They're going to be chopping around testing the waters, but the majority of the time you're going to see the reactionary levels come into play. And this is the combination. And this one, you know, I decided going forward, we know what the orange lines are. They're the FT71 uh, profile lines we get each week. The blue lines are these, um, are the, usually the channel or trend lines that I put in there along with the yellow ones. The blue ones I marked, you know, I just want to coin that this week saying going forward anything blue is a more major one versus the yellow ones which are going to be a little bit um, Probably not as not as um, strong, but they're there. I would probably tr try to make the blue ones a longer based uh, trend line or channel line, and the yellow ones a little in a shorter time frame. So just so we could kind of understand if you're coming to a big level or maybe a minor level. And then uh, we talked about the pivots are already there, and we have everything else there. Now we have the moving averages over over there. So now I decided to decide that when we do get a multiple time frame or a tradometer setup, and that setup is aligned with one of the other indicators you use or the algo x we want to mark that off with a, a yellow you know basically it's a it's a true signal and we want to mark it that's really at the hps zone based off our you know the methodology the white areas and this one's a white seller but here's a white one there will be uh, an oversold in this case the white areas the white circles will be an oversold uh, tradeometer setup but no uh, lining or no um, connecting other indicators that are actually lining up at the same time. So I'm going to make that one a white. But I'm still going to mark it down there because the, the, the multiple time frame entry in itself is worth trading on. It's, you know, it's, I would, you know, I can't break it down to uh, the exact uh, percentage, but if just to uh, kind of give you a, a, you know, I would say uh, multiple time frames work out, um, say, 70% of the time where, or 60% of the time where the higher probability or the multiple time, multiple indicators work out 75 to 80% of the time. All right. And um, so it gives you a better chance when you get yellow, but it still gives you, a, you know, a pretty good chance right here. Same thing here. It's kind of push it up here. There's a trend line here. We could count that, but I only put a minor one there. But you see the reaction. These things are given exact reactions. And that's just, you know, I just want to concentrate and really start to concentrate on the tighter time frames going forward, especially the 60-minute time frame. Um, combined with, you know, just kind of trading off the ES, and, you know, we talked about the different vehicles you could trade, the ETFs, the futures, um, you know, just the trackers, the SPY. So any of these, um, even the Russell, you, know, you could trade the other indexes or the futures. You know, you might want to even go with, start with the Dow futures, something a little less... Uh, well, it gets bigger movement, but, you know, you have a, a different price point on that versus the NASDAQ or the S&P. Um, 
but definitely track these you know you know even the paper trade against them if you want to see how they work you could see and develop your you know risk tolerance because the higher the leverage you know vehicle you're doing probably the more you know anxiety you're going to have during a trade but you know as you could see these levels have played out so you just have to find the right vehicle um so we're going to concentrate a lot on that next week and let's start talking about um the overall trades and then go back one more time and just take a look at the S&P and to finish up with the conversation with Elliot um, you know we talk about the market trying to take out the highs and um, that's it's right there it feels like it wants to do that but my in my experience um, when people start to focus on something so much in the markets or it's expected or talked about or it seems an obvious thing expect the opposite now this doesn't mean that we're going to you know fail but I do think there's a good enough chance to actually break back down a little just to kind of you know kind of upset the apple cart in a way where the market says hey you know what you can't you can't you know predict me um you know I could I could do this and it'll, it'll so let's take a look at this pattern how this is playing out the daily is getting oversold it started to cross back up today cuz we had a nice little reversal the 60 minute chart also crossed back up. Um, it got close to being oversold, but it didn't. So we actually kind of got a little rally, chopped around. This looks a little shaky. It actually looks like we could actually push back down and to roll over. Um, just giving me that uh, that feeling. And then at this point right here, we're talking about you know the possibility of cross up, but also a possibility of rejection and cross back down. So this candle, even though it was okay, it was a Friday's candle. Seems to be holding this minor trend line. We're back above the 20. Everything appearing to go good today, and it looks like you know the possibility of follow through next week is definitely there. But let's just take a look at now that we're really looking at you know a tightening of a pattern. I just put a trend line here. It's not a perfect parallel, you know. I'm trying this just from the recent highs, and we actually touched that recent high today, and then we could actually try to drag this one down a little bit better. But this is what we're starting to see now. Now you're starting to actually. Let me get this out of here. You're going to see this start to tighten up a bit. So it almost feels like a bigger move's coming. But whenever whenever I see this pattern, I am cautious about the upside, the underside of it. People are always expecting the breakout of this pattern, but it leaves this space down here. Because this is your recent low, and say this is your recent high up here. We're so close to it, you feel like you're but you have this kind of rising pressure into it. It's almost like an ascending triangle here. And what happens is we break back down and retest the lower channel before breaking out. So I'm cautious on that. Cautious on being too optimistic in this market. Cautious on, you know, loading, you know, whatever. Just understand that the possibility is there and, you know, we'll see. Overall, time frame down the thing, definitely taking out the highs. But short, medium term time frame, we could get a little shake, shake and bake action here.